All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We just did this once, and I think uh, there weren't too many glitches, so we're doing okay. Um, so as people come in, we'll just uh, we'll just keep on ro keep on rolling here. But I don't want to um, I don't want to cheat you guys out of any time here if you have questions and stuff like that too. So, um, all right. So today we're talking about managing Google your Google Drive account. So as opposed to saying how do you create a basic Google document. That's pretty user friendly and easy to do. What we're talking about is how do you say create folders or organize things as you start to get a bunch of Google Docs, how do you deal with that? So um, if you guys have questions about how to use it in general or if you have follow up questions, I like to say I'm a living handout. I will come to your desk or your room or whatever and I'll sit down with you and we can talk about it. That's part of what I do. So, um, and this is also being recorded so uh, you can always go back and watch it. So. Um, Or Becky, can you just flip the switch real quick? Thanks. Okay, guys, so here's the agenda. Uh, we were able to get to this just barely last time, so hopefully we'll be able to do this. Um, I want to talk about three areas. Organizing, uh, organizing uh, your Google Drive uh, features, uh, searching, sharing documents. I want to highlight something for if you feel like you want to maybe take a risk and try to do some advanced stuff. There's some cool features, especially if you're a classroom teacher, that you can use to manage your Google Drive account to share documents with students. That, that there's some really cool stuff. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll have time for questions, or even if not, there's an evaluation thing that we'll either have you fill out if there's time, or I'll send it out again, and there will be a space there for follow-up questions there. Okay. So um, if you feel free, if, if we if you need clarification questions or if you have a burning question, please feel free to ask along the way. All right. So when I'm talking about organizing, I'm talking about some pretty basic stuff. Um, but I think it's, it's useful stuff. So we're talking about how to sort the view, just like you would in, uh, if you had files in Windows. Uh, the grid <coughs> versus list view, multiple ways to access, bless you, uh, multiple ways to access menus, uh, how to create folders, and how to manipulate those folders, and how to star or favorite something. So um, let me go ahead and get started. Is everybody getting logged in okay, doing okay? All right. So catch up as you can, or if you can't, just keep on eating pizza, and this will be recorded, OK? All right. So you'll notice in your uh, Google Drive account, I don't know if this worked for you guys. I did share some stuff with the whole uh, whole school. So if you have it, it would be in. I'll have to investigate what happened if not. But people last time didn't have it. I shared a couple things, and, and it should show up in your shared with me. I shared it with the whole school. Um, if you don't have any files that you can work with, then I shared those. If not, then uh, you probably have a bunch. Um, Maybe you have a bunch already that other people have created or you've created. Um, as you can see, like for somebody like me, being able to organize this thing is kind of necessary. Um, I've got a lot of folders here. Um, so first thing I want to mention is that there's the My Drive thing over here. These are folders that you've created or that you own. And then we've got Shared With Me. These are things that other people have shared with you. So you might have files in either place, even if you don't see anything under your My Drive. All right. Um, real basic thing, um, this might, some of this might sound familiar just like Windows, uh, but there's um, some basic ways to organize this list. First thing I want to show you is just the sort feature. It's pretty basic, but if you click up on sort up here, you can uh, rearrange these files as needed. Um, you might want to do that, say you're, you try to track down a file, you know you edited it this morning, you can't remember what it's called, or maybe you just, you'd rather have it alphabetical. Um, or maybe you want to see, um, you know, last one you edited for whatever reason. But anyway, you can use the sort feature. Uh, say I want to rearrange it by last modified. If I do that, then that will be the last thing that I, uh, so the newest one will appear on top. So pretty basic, just a, uh, um, just a sort feature. You can also do that down here uh, using these. So it's got a couple ways that you can do that. So just real basic, just a way to, um, to, sort, the, uh, to sort the views there. Um, let's see. The uh, next thing is I've got a list of files here, but maybe I want to be able to preview what's there. Maybe I want to be able to see inside the documents. And I know you can do that with thumbnails with Windows, but I can also do that just by clicking on this grid view. So if I want to be able to get a preview of what these different documents are, if I happen to be a very visual person here, that might help me out to be able to quickly uh, to quickly just see and access those things. So I can just switch to grid view from list view. 
Uh, it's, not as, it's not as efficient as far as scrolling through, but it's, it's nice if you want to just quickly, you know, find something that you can recognize here. Uh, all right, so let me go back to list view. Um, one thing I want you to realize is just like Windows, this thing, this program has all, it always has three or four ways to access something. So if I need to access any menu, I can usually just right click uh, and get the same, uh, get a menu there. Say if I wanted to create a new document, if I wanted to create a new folder over here, I could use the create. Um, or there's this menu up at the top too, and this will show up if there's anything that's checked. So just like in Windows, there's three or four, there's always a menu way to, uh, always a menu way to do something, and there's always a right click way, and usually like two or three other ways too. So in some ways this is a lot like Microsoft Office, in some ways it's totally different. So there's a few things that are the same. Um, Next thing, two things, I just want to show you how to create a folder and how to favorite something. Uh, if I Say if, I, uh, if I'm a classroom teacher and I have documents for, uh, or if I happen to be work with principal, for instance, if I'm support staff. Uh, maybe I have, I have multiple areas that I, uh, that I want to organize because they're uh, maybe it's something to do with budget or maybe it's something with first period or maybe with uh, studio art or something like that. I want to be able to organize that. So I want to be able to create some folders to organize that information. So the quickest way here is I can just click on create and folder. So go ahead and, if you would, and create a new folder. So just click on create folder. I'm going to give it a name. All right, and my folders will show up under the My Drive thing. If it doesn't pop up right away, you can click the little caret, and it will expand it. So I've got my fifth period workshop folder here. Nothing in it. I'm going to go back using the My Drive thing up here. All right. So um, the easiest way to, to deal with the folders, if I want to put something in it, is I can just click and drag. So if I want to just click on it, I can just drag it over to fifth period workshop, oops, then it shows up in my fifth period. Uh, so if I've got a ton of files, it's easy for me just to quickly drag, drag, drag everything and set up my folders, drag everything to where they need to be. Um, another cool feature, this was a big hit for some reason last time, uh, was that if you're somebody who tends to like to have a uh, visual organization, you can certainly uh, click the little carrot here or I can right click like I said, but if I click the little carrot, I can say change color. So if I want to, say, color code all of my, uh, every folder that has to do with first period or everything that has to do with X topic, and then I can quickly visually just kind of, you know, at a, at a glance see which, you know, which folder it has to do with. So, okay, does that make sense? Do blue for Wildcat here, so there we go. So we've got, a, so I can color code, and, and I can even if I want to, I can create subfolders in there too if I need to. I forgot to mention that last time, so I could create a subfolder in there for that one particular class. Um, okay, the last thing I want to show you under organization is the ability to, uh, to star something. So say something like the latest month for the lab sign up, if I want to do that. Um, say instead of searching through my, f my folder here, um, and I want to quickly <coughs> access something, um, all I've got to do is click on the star and it's going to put it in my favorites, or my star. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse to my drive by clicking on this carrot, and I'm going to go to starred, and those are all the things that I've starred. Although after so many of them, it starts to become like a useless feature, but maybe you've got three or four things that you want to star uh, that you access frequently, and you can star it that way. Uh, another tip, too, is if you want to always get back to that quickly, I forgot to say this last time, I could just bookmark that link right there. And I could just click on that, and I could always go right to my start folder when I go to Google Docs, and it'll show up on my favorites bar. So, all right, just a thought. Um, but that's start. So if you have a bunch of things that you want to access often, you know, and you can always unstar them, it'll, it'll, it'll get out of the list. But it's just like the favorites, uh, like a favorites bar or favorites up here, just with documents. All right, so that is organizing. Search. Uh, this thing, I think, it has a great search feature. Um, there's the basic search for your feature here. It will search within the document itself, which is kind of useful. Um, I put a Gettysburg address here. So I'm going to look a search for a four score. And what's funny to me is all these other files showed up, and I have no idea why. But um, So it's got four and score, words four and score there. So I'm wondering here. It's Google, so I could probably put quotes around it. And, yep. So 
uh, search for it as a phrase. So you can treat it like Google, the quotes being that means it's a phrase, basically. Um, but maybe if I wanted to maybe do a little bit of more advanced search, if I'm getting too many results, I can click on the carrot. And I can narrow that down, what sort of information I'm finding. So if I want to say, just search for ones that have the word four score in it, that are just Google Docs or text documents, and because I got too many results there, it's going to go. That's all my that search that gives me all of my ones that are Google documents or text documents, and then I can add a search term for score, and then I just get a few. Okay, everybody with me? Okay, so. That's basically basic and advanced search. It's really easy if you want to, if you kind of know, this is useful, say, if you're like, okay, I know it was a document that I did, like, uh, it's one that I made. Um, I know it's a PDF file. All right, that's all I know. That's good. But if I have, maybe I know a term in that, that'll help me narrow it down quite a bit. So, um, so that's searching. Um, okay. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention last time? Yeah. For the keep on mentioning stuff I forgot to say the first time, but anyway, um, if there's anything that's publicly accessible throughout the whole school, I can even do it by clicking here. Look, I can click search there. And if anybody else has shared documents, um, I guess Donna Leahy has, and we go LRC, some other people. So if it was, if it was so any user that shared it with the whole school, it would also show up. So, um, so basically, there we go. So that's just another option there. So way to do basic or advanced searching. I realize this is kind of quick. We only got 20 minutes, so um, I like to. I'm gonna keep on saying this. Um, I will come to your room or your office and help you sit down with you and help you to figure this out if you have follow-up questions. So um, next part is sharing. This is, I think, one of the coolest features of Google Docs that you can't necessarily do this in Word as much, and that's being able to share a document with somebody else so they can edit it even at the same time you're working on it. Um, so basically, you can do that with documents, you can do it with whole folders, you can choose who can see it or who can do, who can view it, who can just comment on it or who can just look at it. Um, and there's the, the share with me versus the my drive. Uh, let me see if I can get to that. Um, okay. All right. So sharing, you guys will see that these have a, um, a little person there. So if I want to share, um, if I want to share something, say with, um, with Patty back there. Uh, maybe I want to share a document, and we, we do this all the time in the LRC. We want to, maybe uh, we're both working on a list that I want her to contribute to, and I'm going to work on it at the same time. So, or maybe if you are working with a colleague, maybe writing curriculum or something like that. You want to be able to both edit the document, or even a whole folder that you want to be able to drop things in. You've got the AIDS drive, but then you can't both work on it, and you both can't get to it outside of school, unless you have um, access to be able to do that. Um, so say I want to say I want to share this. Um, hmm. I'm trying to find the one, one that isn't shared here. Um, this fifth period workshop here. Um, now let's. Um, what I would do is if I if I check it, there's a couple ways I can do this. One, if I check it, this menu is going to show up here, and this little guy um, is the share button. So I can get to it that way. And I can even go into the document if I'm working at the document. And I can just click on share here. So it's obviously viewed from, this is available to everybody in the high school, but you can change that. All right, so if I wanted to share this with somebody so they could also go in and maybe view it or make some edits to it, uh, maybe make sure, let me make sure I got your name right here, Megan. D-U-L-K-I-N-Y-S? Yep. All right, so if I wanted Megan to be able to go in here and edit this document, Oops. I just had her. I just had her email address. One of the questions that came up last time was, um, "Is there a list of everybody?" Not by default, but there is a way to use. The, there's a contacts feature here, so you could actually import, um, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's uh, address. You can do the same thing with your students. Um, I, I made some videos and put them on the on the site uh, that show you how to uh, export usernames or ID numbers from PowerSchool and to basically create a list of student addresses that you could use. You could have like a ready-made list that you could just drop into any document or folder. 
Um, so if you'd like to do that, you can see that Megan is now on the document, and she could start typing if she wants to. So. So. <laughs> Apparently, she's she's got a lot to say today. So. Um, so this. This really freaks kids out, you know, like when they're. Um, so say like, practical use. Say like if I wanted to. Um, um, say with a PowerPoint, like a PowerPoint clone, they're, um, they have a, uh, called presentations. You guys, the teacher, could create like one for each group. You could put the kids' name, the kids' usernames in that, in that, uh, share with that document. You are the owner of that document. That means that you're the only one that could delete it, and you're the one that could go back and make changes. You can go back and see who did what, when. Uh, but since you're the owner of the document, you know, like, and you share it with them, they can all go in, that group can go in, make changes at the same time to that PowerPoint, so collaboratively, which, you know, the alternative is if they're doing a PowerPoint together as a group, a lot of times what you have to do is everybody works separately, then you import all the slides. <coughs> With this, you, you give access to them. You can allow them to all work at the same time. Um, you can go in as, the, as a member of that file, if you will. You can see who's working. You can see who made, you can see who made changes. Did they make it at the period before? And then they tell you, you know, I don't know whatever they're going to tell you or they... You know, or they, you can tell they opened it or when they made changes. So you can kind of keep a little, uh, you can keep tabs on them too if you'd like. But, um, but basically, it's, I think there's a, a, a huge number of people that can be edited on one, uh, one document. That's not always that pro uh, efficient. But um, here's another application here. If I want to be able to, say, share this folder. Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to share this folder instead of just a file. Um, I could put all my kids' um, school email addresses. All of your students have um, Google, Google Drive accounts in the school. It's already set up. It is basically their username. I mean, their, yeah, their username, school username, at students.d94.org. That's their username. Password is their network password, 94 at the end. So there's no really setup for them to create an account. It's already set up. But, like, say if I wanted to, I could say, I could put all, all the kids from first period addresses in here and share <laughs> it with them. And maybe, um, and then maybe I'll leave it as can view, for instance. Um, say if I want to share like a, a template with them, I want to create a uh, um, something. Well, I guess I would need to do that, wouldn't I? Um, uh, say Patty Arnold here wants to say like share a, a document that she wants the kids to edit. So she creates it just like she wants. She puts a folder up. She shares with all the students. They can go in there, grab a copy of it. They open the one that they can just view. Then they say, make a copy. They've got their own copy of it. Then they can just share it back with you. And there's actually a more advanced way to do that. There's something called Doctopus uh, that is a script that could, that could be installed here. And that's one of the advanced things I'll show you guys. I'll just show you the list of advanced things. So that's something that you just click, install, and then you just say, set it up to class. And then you just click a button, and it automatically creates a document with URLs and stuff like that. So I'll show you the list of that stuff in a few minutes. But that's how you could use this. If you, or, um, Say with our um, website committee, or that I'm doing with the uh, with uh, Joe back there, and a couple of other people, I was able to share, and Becky being able to share, like here's a folder, everybody's got access to it. So if Alistair has a curriculum committee document, he can just drop all the files in there and share it with everybody, and then they can get to it from anywhere. So um, okay, Let's see, did I get everything? Um, just want to mention the levels of access here. Um, if you notice, it says private. I can say public on the web, so if you want your kids to actually publish something, you can do it even with a Google Doc, and it'll be like a web page. Uh, all the way down to everybody at community high school, or just me. If it's just me, and then I share it with individual people, it's just between you guys, So versus wanting to share it with the whole school. So it's just levels of access you can choose, uh, how visible it is to people. So that would be a way to not have to type in all the kids' email addresses? Like it um, email yes, addresses. yeah. But if you just want to share it with your class, we can have you create a list that you just have on a hand that you can always just drop in every time. So, and I have some videos up that's, uh, that are on that page that I'll show you where it is in a second. Um, okay, so, oh, the share with me. Anything that anybody shares with you, this can be confusing sometimes. Anybody, the thing that anybody shares with you is always going to show up on the share with me as opposed to the my drive. You can, if you want to, if it's something you want to be able to access more often, you can always drag it over to the my drive. And it should uh, show up in the my drive instead of the share with me. So um, it's just a way you can just move it, to, like moving it from one place to the other. Then it'll show up in your list of my drive at that point. 
Okay, so it's just a, a note that's something that, that uh, is kind of confusing for people. Um, what sort of questions do you guys have? Eric, if you share a folder with every every new document you put in there, we've now shared with that group. Automatically, right? yeah, automatically inherits whatever you told it to. Okay. Yeah, and anybody that drops a folder in on the other end, same thing. So if you wanted to create a first period folder, mm -hmm. and you could drop documents in all year, and that would continue to be shared with your first period class. Exactly. Yeah, you share it once, done. So, anything else? Okay, uh, before you go, Patty, let me just uh, mention really quick the, uh, um, let's see if I can, sorry, let me get back to the folder here. Uh, the Lunch and Learn website is on our blog here, and the presentation, a recording of this, uh, will be up later. There's some tutorials here, as well as the one for creating class lists that I mentioned. Uh, there are some add-ons. This is this, when I say advanced users, I mean if you feel comfortable. It's not necessarily hard. It just takes some. I'll sit down with you and do it. It's just some more. You know, if you're a little bit um, have a little bit of trepidation about doing so. There's some really cool stuff here. Um, let's see. And there's also a follow-up questions in form. So we'll, I'll send this out individually. But if you have follow-up questions, I'll have you fill this out. Quick evaluation of this workshop. And if you have future suggestions, I believe that Dr. Domarecki would like to know if you guys have topics that you would like to like to see in workshops, not just technology, but anything. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.